Hey YouTube people, today I'm going to be looking at this little guy here, the GMK Tech. Uh, this is the K8 Plus, it has an 8845 HS CPU and it's a kind of a great little box. It has dual 2.5 NICs, it has importantly an Oculink port and also USB 4 so you can use it with my custom eGPU solutions, link in the description if you're interested in learning more about those. Um, but what I wanna do with it today is see what the difference is when you kind of just take this at stock value versus trying to optimize the crap out of it. <laughs> and when I say optimize the crap out of it, what I really mean is, what does it run like when you have 4,800 megahertz RAM in here versus 5,600? Apple CL46 and CL40. How much of a difference can that make in your performance? Also, I'm going to replace the uh, stock thermal paste with PTM7950. In normal usage, it's pretty quiet, but if you're really ramping it in a game and you have it running at a full like 60, 65 watts, it can get a bit noisy. So I wanna see what we can do to improve the situation. So maybe the PTM7950 fixes that. Um, if not, we'll do some more advanced cooling on this little guy. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what we can do. Uh, so first let's look at the difference in the RAM speed. It's really easy to take off. You just kind of uh, turn it at a 45. And this comes right off, exposing screws here. And if you bought this as a bare bones kit, you'll already know this because you would have had to open it up to access the inside but what I'm going to be doing right now is simply changing the RAM for now and getting a look at what we have here now it's kind of funny that these tiny little PCs actually have a ton of performance for what they are so I've got a SK Hynix Platinum P41 2 terabyte in here I did have some 5600 mega transfer RAM in here, but I'm going to remove that. I originally have a few benchmarks run with these. These are 4800 uh, mega transfers per second, um, and I upgraded it to the 5600 and took some benchmark figures with that as well. But these are CL46. And I'm going to be using these rip jaws, which are 5,600 mega transfers and CL40. So I'm curious if that's going to actually make much of a difference. Uh, I will say that there's actually a pretty dramatic difference versus the 4,800 sticks. So I was curious to see if there's even more uplift to be had if you put in CL40 versus CL46. Um, you could get crazy and kind of play with the BIOS and see if you can overclock the RAM. I may try that. Um, but for now, I want to just stick to the recommended 5600 and just see if there's any difference um, when you do that. So that RAM's installed, we're ready to go. Let's go run some benchmarks. Okay, so I ran two different benchmarks. Uh, Time Spy, just the basic. Uh, the score that we're looking at here is the 3D score, not the combined score, because that's kind of the, the what we're looking for. The, the higher RAM speed really affects, uh, I mean, it does affect the CPU as well, but more than anything, it affects the GPU, which shares the DDR5. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, it's as quick as possible because that can affect the gaming performance. So Time Spy 3D uh, with 4800 mega transfer RAM got 2677 on Time Spy. Uh, 5600 CL46 got 2889, which was an about an 8% uplift by switching to 5600 mega transfer RAM. So that's a good thing to do. And by switching from CL46 to CL40, we actually got an additional 1.21%. Um, so the CL46 versus CL40 is not a huge difference. Uh, like it's much more important to get 5600 RAM versus 4800, but uh, look for a CL40 kit and you get an extra 1.21%. Uh, 
In Final Fantasy Benchmark, however, uh, we got 3649 on 4800, and uh, 5,600 mega transfers got us a 5.59% uplift. And the CO40 actually did more for us here on Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, got us an additional 2.5% of performance. So uh, overall, these uplifts, we're looking at, you know, mm, about 9 to 10% in time spy and 8% in Final Fantasy uh, benchmark. So not not huge but kind of big you know you you could you'd notice the difference you'd be able to notice the difference um i mean it'd be close but but 10 is is quite a bit i mean that's the difference between what you get on <laughs> like an i5 versus an i7 for example like you know those are the margins that you get on things like that so just by choosing the right set of ram you can really increase your performance there so definitely worth considering okay so we're going to we're back where we were with the top off and let's go ahead and disconnect the fan and our goal is going to be getting to the back side of this machine and I've never taken it apart before but what I do see are there are four screws down in the posts of the other screw. So I'm wondering if that is what is going to let us get back there. Now there is some foil here that is taped on the side, but it looks like we might not need to do that because this back half came completely off. And that lets us flip this to the back side. And now, just looking at it, it looks like we've got four screws. Let's go ahead and see what that does for us. It looks like there's some tape here. I probably didn't want to rip that, but so now we've exposed these four screws. I'm going to loosen them in a clockwise fashion. Now you Whenever you do stuff like this, you want to do a mental map of the screws in your head as you're placing them down so you know exactly where they go. All right. Let's take this off and see what we have underneath. It's like a pretty basic paste job. We'll go ahead and get this cleaned up. It actually seems like they have pretty good thermal paste on there. I mean, just going off of texture alone. Okay, now that I have most of the gunk off, I'm gonna go ahead and use some rubbing alcohol. Now they have a little vapor chamber in here, so that's actually pretty cool. All right, let's put our PTM 7950 on. Cut this to size. That looks pretty good. Now this stuff is always difficult to get the plastic off of. I put this in the fridge, freezer rather, to try to keep it cold and malleable. Well, hard. 
not malleable, hard. And we'll place it like that. That's pretty good. And now we're going to take the other side of the wrapper off, just like that. And we've got a good PTM 7950 install. All right, let's get it all back together. Seems like it has pretty good cooling overall, so just get this back on. So I'll put that one on halfway, and then this one on halfway, and then I'll put this one on all the way. And then I'll put this one on also all the way. And then I will finish up these two all the way. And then just double check my tension. We've got, got that on there nice and tight. OK. Now we can get the fan back on and try to get the tape to go on as straight as possible. Now I'm going to put my tape back. Now imagine what this is doing, just making sure none of the air leaks into the case because you want to blow it directly out of the case. So that tapes back on pretty good this is going to go on top of here very nice and let's put it all back together and keep testing Okay, so let me explain what you're looking at. I ran a 100% load test using Furmark both before I installed that PTM7950 and after I installed the PTM7950. So you can see there's a dramatic difference even though we're doing the exact same test. The red line here is the stock cooling uh, thermal paste and the green line is the PTM7950. So you can see that the CPU temperature not go nearly as high. Obviously, we had a dramatic improvement in CPU temps. But what about noise? Uh, because there's a couple other things we can look at to look at that. So here's the CPU fan. And you can see that this CPU fan uh, on the stock configuration started going full blast. 3500 RPM, where the PTM uh, setup you know, it didn't even go to blast at full blast. Um, and even by the end of the 10 minute test of being loaded, it had only gotten up to 3300 RPM instead of 3500 RPM, uh, which can make a huge difference in noise. You can see it wasn't nearly as willing to ramp up. Um, so that's really interesting. Uh, let's look at the other fan because we have two. There's the power fan RPM. And this one didn't get uh, as much benefit, although you can obviously see that there is benefit here. Um, so yeah, quieter fans with that PTM 7950, uh, cooler temperatures, and the data is all here for that. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the CPU package power. So you can see that the PTM7950 actually boosted much higher. It, it said, hey, I've got headroom. You know, I'm not hot yet. And uh, because what we saw with the standard thermal paste was it very quickly got up into like the danger zone, like 90C plus. Um, so when, when that happens, it starts to throttle back itself and then kind of redefines and then finds an equilibrium point, which you can see that in the red stock configuration. The green configuration actually said, whoa, I have way more overhead, and then it lowered it down probably as, as part of a um, 
maybe it was still well no it didn't get over i don't even think he got over 82 but let's take a look um yeah it got uh, up to maybe just at 82 maybe 83 degrees but it never exceeded that which is well behind the danger zone for the chip um, so it's it's obviously a much better uh, solution um, but yeah we were looking at the package power so I mean the point is neither of these are throttling you actually don't have to do this at all uh, it's not going to gain you any performance changing out the PTM 7950 because this device doesn't really throttle except maybe a a little burst you might get a little extra burst speed at the very beginning so maybe but uh but yeah in general it's using the same amount of power but the fans are ramped up way less and the temperatures are also way less so uh, we are able to take our gmk tech k8 plus and able to really improve the performance by making sure we chose the right memory kit could make a difference of eight to ten percent and we were able to install ptm 7950 which keeps the cpu cooler which allows the fan speed to be reduced which makes less noise for the user it really toned things down um but what else do you think we could do for this little guy uh, some of the things I wish that I had uh, that I'm poking around the internet for is maybe some sort of modded BIOS that lets us use even faster memory, getting it up to 6200 or 6000, 6200, 6400 would really provide a boost to that GPU. I don't know if that's possible. Um, I haven't seen anything for it, but if you know anything, go ahead and leave a comment. If you have any other ideas on how to use this device, I think it's pretty great. It's a great core if you want to pop an eGPU on top of this. And if you want to uh, get some PTM 7950 pace that I used in this video or the RAM that I used in this video, take a link at the description below. And we'll see you on the next video. Get subscribed up because I do have another mini PC coming soon.